Hello guys and welcome to another video which is as often as Relic uh, update which is accidentally the reason of us making this video. So this video will be a let's say 10 minute to 15 minute explanation of a new patch. So this will be the best easiest way to figure out what changed uh, but however I will not tell how that will impact the gameplay completely and what these new commanders bring or to say it more specifically I will not say are these commanders and these changes good or bad and now I'm gonna tell you why because I think that this patch in general is two years late first of all second of all it is showing us how lame Relic was uh, because most of these changes are reskins and just shuffle of things which are already in the game and the things for which community screamed for several years which should have been in the game or which should have been done differently so because of all of those uh, I am not going to comment is this good or bad I'm gonna be neutral uh, you tell me down below what do you guys think about that and which is your favorite commander But from my side, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna tell you in 10 minutes Completely everything which happens in this patch With all of the factions first in general What is this patch aiming at and then for each of the factions as you guys can see here here in a table Which I made so you can find this table down below in a comment section so you can watch it and check it for yourself uh, so you can basically minimize the screen if you want uh, or you can watch together with me these tables as we go because it will be a little bit technical but at the same time I hope interesting. So if you are going to like this, like it and also tell me down below in a comment section uh, what do you think about this patch? I really don't want to go anywhere because I'm a, I, I'm a fanboy. I like it but at the same time I'm super angry so... I'm being a, a, a really good fanboy because now I'm, I'm not giving them a, a pass because as I said this should have been way way should have been done way way before. So uh, let's go in general with this patch. Basically uh, as I said what this patch is besi besides just that reskinning and res reshuffling the abilities of factions so that basically they can uh, be more versatile. Is like you know that show where Oprah gives everyone a, a, a goddamn car. Thompson, 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 Thompson. Well, over here, Relic basically give everyone a goddamn SMG. <laughs> so everyone got an SMG in this pack, in this patch. So yeah, that's in general. And they just just did, as I said, a little bit of shuffling. So let's go with the USF. So as I said, in my opinion, uh, they are just trying to make their riflemen, which are the backbone, to be a little bit more uh, versatile, to give them a little bit of more that uh, abilities and that uh, utility which they had, and which, let's be honest, they 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 suffered as time passed. They were either uh, uh, meat grinders with their LMGs, or they were... Uh, pfft, late game not that good of a use against uh, good German they you can still use them as a whore but they I felt that without l using their smoke uh, nerfing down their guns and everything as time passed they were really reliant on a horde or on a combined arms so they were trying to give them a little bit uh, more of a utility uh, with their grenades and trying to utilize that combined arms which they are aiming at to combine them with uh, the tanks so as we can see from their urban assault package uh, the rear echelon rifle nade a uh, rifle incendiary nade I said uh, m 483 package to go together with uh, the tanks to give uh, the Sherman a uh, more armor and white phosphorus which we can uh, use and uh, cover to cover that smoke so that they can run and close that gap Rangers as well so Rangers also are getting a little bit of a nerf uh, because they all they will be a little bit uh, more squishy so easier to kill but they're still really really good to engage 
and also Calliope is getting a change where they will do a little bit more damage. However, they will have less HP and they will be a little bit less cheaper, so to be easier to dealt with. Uh, also, so their rear echelons, their volley fire got a little bit of a buff where you will have no more penalties uh, while you're firing at, so you will not receive penalties uh, to your volley fire beca because you're receiving damage. And VC-51 got a little bit of nerf when they are on the move and trying to hunt down retreating units. Oh, god damn. They were so good. They were so good. So, basically, my opinion of USF Commander and changes is, as I said, giving them a little bit more of a utility, especially uh, to combine arms as they are trying to emphasize with the USF to go with, to use their tanks and use their infantry together in a in a basically zerg <laughs> mode so yeah let's move the, to the british uh, forces british land lease assault huh. so british always had uh, uh, um, i always called the brits a uh, german faction inside the allies why because as germans you don't zerg you don't rush at least not as Wehrmacht then uh, OKV early game, OKV you can maybe late game if you spam uh, fuses, but as you'll see later that will also change. But basically uh, they were a faction which you play slowly, methodically, you use cover, you move slowly, you you get a little bit of tactics into your game. You don't go uh, order 227 and just rush everything with, uh, with your troops. So uh, now they are giving them a little bit of a change in their playstyle. So they are giving them with this commander more aggression, more ability to push forward early game to be, you know, uh, as Wehrmacht would be with their assault grenadiers. So basically this is uh, in a way, in my opinion, a kind of a, a replica of uh, the assault doctrine, assault grenadier uh, doctrine for the Wehrmacht. Uh, so you are getting assault sections, 10 at Thompson's for your uh, sections, you're getting phosphor, phosphorus nades and accuracy receives minus 5%. So you'll get a little bit of a buff, so you will have uh, less penalties while, while, while being fired upon, while you're moving and while you're engaging. A uh, big change is that you're getting a mortar. Uh, the one which USF has, 81mm I believe it is, uh, which will be able to move like, like a regular uh, unit, so you don't have to be stationary. Again, uh, a utility of a mobile aggressive playstyle, which we are trying to emphasize with this commander. Vehicle repair, this is general change, general change, and also ability of this commander, where you can, you can now repair your vehicles, uh, they will cost a little bit more, and uh, that's one of the biggest changes, and M10 Achilles is seen as M10 USF uh, Wolverine, which we have. So this is the stuff which I said, it is basically a reskin. They're just making utilities of one faction or that faction units being available for other units and other factions inside uh, their overall group. So allies have mixed some uh, utilities, some of their weapons and Germans as well, as you guys will see. So. I know why why this wasn't available from the beginning, what the hell. Uh, regarding the general changes, uh, Six Pounder, they had uh, 50 or 40% bonus accuracy against light vehicles, artificial bonus, which is now removed, so they will not have artificial bonus against light, ve uh, light uh, vehicles. Carrier armor is moving down, so finally you can deal with it. I mean, you can deal as uh, Sturm Pios from behind with the STG, you can do a really good damage but up front good luck my friend and mill bombs now will have a minimum range which uh, they will be able to be thrown at the opponents you you cannot throw it under your legs i mean you're you're brits you're not japanese no kamikaze so yeah okay now we move to the last allied faction which are soviets and it's basically airborne <laughs> soviet airborne what to what to tell so these basically the soviets were the only faction in the game uh when to get you know someone to call in or something to parachute uh so besides partisans i mean but as time passed they were nerfed as well so they're finally getting uh, a good utility 
commander uh, basically as we said which is tradition with all of these it is uh, just uh, mixing uh, oh ah, uh, my screen server got on so it is just make making uh, more utility of their overall uh, resources between their uh, units uh, this one is focusing mostly on infantry and infantry only so uh, first thing is that we are getting weapon crate so this would give you four SVTs guns if you pick it up uh, SVTs are the penal battalion uh, rifles so uh, those are the SVTs uh, this will however if you pick it up with your uh, engineers it will not lock out minesweepers and flamers for them so that is a good thing but if you pick it up by penals all of them will get pps ha 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 so in my humble opinion uh weapons crate is basically uh giving an option to turn your penals uh from good infantry combat unit to pick between them being a good one and giving them the anti-tank capability with uh, their anti-tank rifle with this commander and weapon crate you're giving them ability to go towards anti-infantry completely and upgrade them with ppsh so this is this is giving you more option to play uh with your penal so as we said it this whole commander is building up on infantry and to quite frankly it is it is focusing a lot on penals in my opinion i mean this weapons crate is the biggest biggest change uh, for me uh you'll see some other changes as well but i mean regarding the the the, the basic units and basic stuff which we had uh dushkas so you can drop dushka now and uh, the armor perf piercing is buffed so they are now like 50 cal as well so you can watch for that airborne rally point Ooh, this is a huge ability it wields enemies in 60 meters you can reinforce while in friendly territory and it can get rally point and heal this is big for soviets man i mean did they have that urban defense where you can build an hq now with this ability you can basically you can <laughs> everything is hq <laughs> so yeah this is this is a powerful ability which soviets have in my opinion i think that uh they got a really good a good good interesting commander which uh again just gave them more utility they just mixed everything they had into this one and now airborne guards Ooh. so basically this will spawn a, a unit from any building or from call in uh and you can upgrade them with uh three dp 28 upgrades that are anti-tank rifles uh, they get free ppsh smoke and uh they have an ability to like you know superior firepower like usf have to suppress down the, the opponents and they can call IL-2 strafing. What the hell? It's like you're in this one, one, <laughs> one unit. You are getting uh, Company Furious One uh, riflemen. Oh, sorry, Company Furious One uh, Rangers combined with Company Furious Two uh, Major with its IL-2 strafing. It is. Uh, they're trying to get the most important parts of those two and mixing them into one but not giving them the full range for example that uh major would give you the scouting area and would give you a good howitzer here you'll only get il2 strafing but however it will do damage if you if you engage an opponent and you call a good il2 strafing without free ppsh once you get close to them they're dead i mean you if if they don't instantly retreat they're dead this is this here right here soviet airborne is perfect to get a good breakthrough and it is perfect to counter any enemy attack by making even more aggressive counterattack. so and then you get tile 2 rockets which is basically like uh p47 uh calling 
uh, rocket strikes by the USF. Regarding the general change, as we said, it's not just that the commander is focusing on infantry, their general changes are also cha focusing on infantry. Conscripts, they can get one more man in their squad with this uh, upgrade. So they can get uh, this upgrade, the mobilization one, and they can get one more man. This will also give them the cover bonus, which similar to the British one, where they will the, they'll deal more damage because they'll reload faster, they'll be a little bit more uh, accurate. And I, I'm not sure, but I think that they will also get small buff for the defensiveness. But however, you're getting a, a one more man in your... Uh, unit deal they, yeah and also they will be uh, cheaper to reinforce so basically they are building up on soviet zerg a lot <laughs> so soviet soviet zerg if it wasn't true now now it's not it's not that it's true now it's that it's it's basically a, a fact which you should frequently see okay 18 aids are also cheaper for the conscripts. Uh, Maxims will get a better suppression when using their ability. And 42 AT, that was a small AT which you can get from uh, that uh, urban defense one. So their canister shot got nerfed a little bit. Thanks God. M5 quad got a little bit of, a own, uh, of an all around buff. Ah, well, okay. Uh, SU 76 got nerfed. Uh, performance but its mobility is increased which i think is a really good idea because su 76 is a really it's a really good weapon i mean you getting one su 76 is all it you can never miss too much with it why because you can use its uh, ability to bombard and you can use it as the ability to engage with uh, with armor which uh, uh, the Germans would get. And Germans would usually wouldn't get at least at lower uh, number counts from 2 to 2v2 or 1v1, wouldn't get uh, a really hard armor that soon you you can get 276 before they can. And when you combine several 276 and bombard and use them as anti-tank vehicles, I mean, they, they are they're interesting build you can go with. And M5 assault truck, uh, less the cost of it. So yeah, it's a little bit uh, easier to get it. Now we go to Germans. So as we saw with the Allies, most of the changes went into their infantry. Here with Germans, we have some vehicles as well included. So let's go with the Wehrmacht Strategic Reserve. So basically it what it does is, I'm, I'm just going to read it. So I, I, I think it says the best. Reshuffling their tools to make them more viable and improve utility against horde panzer 4 and 6 are there to support their lines so what changed with wehrmacht the biggest change in my opinion here uh, are tag race and assault grants so assault grants because as we saw allies got a lot of utility more men and more uh, guns to be a little bit more aggressive like they weren't so far against Germans. So basically strategic reserve, it's like being built to give you a little bit of a more, more of a chance to deal with that. <laughs> so what that means, uh, let's go with the assault grants. So the assault grants, uh, they will do a little bit more damage and they'll be more accurate. They will also be a smaller target. So basically assault grandiers got uh, buffed completely. So ass assault grandiers are buffed in every aspect of the game defensive and offensive one uh, also the second ability this also includes mp40 just didn't it is not it is only not including mp40 for uh pioneers i think uh, so mp40 of volks grenadier will also be impacted by the small buff of the mp40 uh weapon so volks grenadier will also be impacted by Wehrmacht uh buff uh, or we are also getting the observation ability, so M51 uh, half track can get a flare, it can get immobilized and get the camouflage, and it can reveal uh, a, a range of a 60 meter around it. This was also, but it was patched, hot patched. This also served as a retreat point. 
which I don't get. Why don't Vermont has a retreat uh, point for a rally point to which they can run? For God's sake, they are the they are the faction with least amount of men in their infantry units. And they are the ones who have to go all the way back. If you manage to get Vermacht player all the way back to retreat to his uh, base, good. I mean, ha! Oh, God damn it! You can basically t take half of the map until he comes back, and he will not have enough men to deal with you instantly if you get a good push. So yeah. Okay. Uh, breakthrough equipment. So Panzer Grenadiers got a smoke, which will also shared cooldown with their uh, mates but it's a good thing to, to like you know blockade uh, a, a view and then just rush uh, with your panzer grenadiers definitely a good thing giving them more uh, utility uh, pioneers can finally get a settle charge and they can get uh, that box to clean the obstacles like the British sappers have I'll just give a comment here on German or Wehrmacht uh, pioneers not having a settle charge. How the how the hell could have that happen? The faction in World War II, in reality, which basically destroyed everything af on on its path of retreat, is the only faction which didn't got a single TNT to destroy enemy obstacle. Just give me the logic of it, and I'll say yes. I can go with the logic of Sturm Pioneers being assault aggressive pioneers which are up on the first line and, and, and attacking and pun punching through because that's what they are, but combat engineers not having a settle charge and the Wehrmacht ones, god damn it, this game came, this game came out, I don't know, four or five years ago and now we got this, th th that's my frustration. Also, Panzer uh, 4J, that's a version of Oberkommando Panzer, which we got, so yeah, it's basically just giving it to the Wehrmacht from Oberkommando. Good job, Relic, something we never saw. Uh, Tiger Race, this is the biggest uh, change. So, to build Tiger Race, now you can build it, uh, you need an HQ to build it. Uh, its performance is a little bit nerfed and it gets with one star, however... You don't get uh, penalties for resources. You can call him more times to the battlefield, so you, it's not one time calling, and you have to pay to build it. So basically, it's like a tiger, but now it's a realistic tiger ace crew with more experience and not like a god tier tiger, which for some reason, when you call in, everything else is lower even though it should have been higher uh usually when you have elite troops around your soldiers they are more inspired and well, yeah we, i don't want to go into it general changes for the wehrmacht ostwind got buffed finally Ugh. we see that basically all of the german vehicles have been buffed to deal with infantry Panzer 4G in this commander, which is now here, he is, the OKV Panzer is way better against infantry. And here we got him, Tiger Race, we can call more of them. Uh, Ostwind got buffed, Stug 3 also got buffed, he has uh, armor buffed and his size uh, lower down, so that's a buff because it's, it's tougher to hit him. And also Panzer Grenadiers uh, built buff, so they can uh, be built uh, faster and they are better together with uh, other vehicles. So basically they are giving them, they are making a combined arm. So just imagine this, you have these commanders from allies, they are zerg zerging in. You build it up an Ostwind. With this buff, he'll be a little bit better to deal with them. But, you know, it's a Zerg. Someone will reach you. So what are you going to do? Obviously, you're going to get some Panzer Grenadiers to deal with that Assault Zerg, which is coming forward. And here we go. They have buff when they are fighting with vehicles. So that means that they will be a little bit better to deal with them. So basically, they are forcing a combined arms here as well. It's like... They competed between each other to make these commanders to uh, to counterattack or to counter each other. <laughs> so that's it. Let's go to the Okavi Grand Offensive. So build a, a build around the Tiger 
and combined armed support again. So Fusiliers are now dedicated uh, troops and Tiger support OKV normal army with abilities. So basically this one for OKV it's built around Tiger. You know how uh, task a naval task group for US uh, Navy it's built around uh, the carrier which has battle cruisers battleships no battleships but you know uh cruisers uh, destroyers submarines in in rings and circles around it when this one well this one uh, is built with uh the tiger so basically let's go slowly with the changes and then I'll, I'll comment that so fusiliers you can now build them from zero cp and what changed is that now you have two builds you can go with panzer fusiliers as anti-tank troops or as anti-infantry troops. They will now start with five men, and if you go with anti-tank, you will get an upgrade for the shrugs, and you'll stay with five men. If you go with anti-infantry, you can upgrade them to get the sixth squad, the last member of, of, the, of the unit, and you can get an upgrade for weapons. So, after that, we have STG-44 upgrade for Robert Saldaltons, uh, the one which we already have. We get the Stuka Smoke, which we already have. Panzer Commander, which we already have, with uh, all of the benefits he gets. And here comes the biggest change, which is Command Tiger. So, I'll, I'll give you the, 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 the idea of this Tiger. So, basically, when he is on the battlefield, he'll give, he can give some buffs to his uh, to the troops around him. So, he will buff infantry when he uh, uses his ability. So, while he is buffing infantry, he is nerfing down his reload. So, that means that if you use his ability, all of the troops around him will fight better. However, he will fight a little bit slower, not worse, but slower, because he will be there to assist them. But, this is where, where everything changes when he gets more veterancy uh he will slowly for example on veterancy uh two he will also buff vehicles for the same percentage i believe it's around 20 percent reload and accuracy to all infantry and all vehicles while he's on veterancy one or the first ability he can only buff infantry on veterancy two he can buff vehicles and infantry while he, when he, but he'll still de get that penalty for his reload and his uh, performance. But when you reach veteran C3, this is important because you want to keep him really carefully. Then he will give all of those bonuses and he will, bon he will uh, negate the penalties for himself. So basically at veteran C3, you're getting all of those bonuses without penalties. And as we go forward, uh, uh, he will just be better and better. He'll give uh, himself a little bit more uh, abilities, a little bit more performance, a little bit of more of a numbers. So basically, Command Tiger, it's it's the core build of this commander. You want to just get the Tiger and keep him safe and, and keep him behind. So this Tiger, it's not like Wehrmacht Tiger, which one you get, and it's, it's your punching card. Because by the time you get the Tiger, you usually want to use him to punch through an enemy line and to make that breakthrough or even sacrifice that goddamn Tiger to clear all, all of the enemies and then get that late game advantage, advantage and breeding time you need. This one, you want to keep. This one is a keeper. <laughs> okay, so also the general change for OKV is that uh, they got, just got some utility uh, units buff. Cubal is a little bit more mobile and their support gun will now get, gain veterancy faster so that they can uh, deal with uh, enemies. So basically those are all of the changes and everything in this patch. Tell me down below, what do you guys think about this patch? I mean, as I said, I'm not gonna comment this, but I would like to hear your comments on this. Until next time, I hope that you guys enjoyed and I'll see you soon. Bye.